This piece of equipment is a burette. It is used in a very common quantitative procedure called a titration. And this is where two solutions react together and we record the precise volume of titrant, which is the solution in this cylinder, that reacts with a known volume of another solution called the analyte. Now the burette, as I say, is a graduate is a long cylinder and it's got a graduated scale which enables us to record the precise volumes we're using. It's an inverted scale, so it holds 50 centimetre cubed of solution, but the scale starts at zero. So as solution is dispensed, it tells us how much solution has been dispensed into the analyte. It's also got a tap at the bottom which opens and closes and that allows us to control the flow of the titrant as we add it to the analyte. Now when I use my burette, the first thing I need to do is to add my titrant to the burette cylinder. So I'm going to use a funnel because it's quite a narrow tube and we don't want any spillages. My tap is closed. I'm just going to pour it in up to the top there. Now before I start using it, the whole point is to get a precise volume. So I need to make sure there's no air bubbles trapped in there. Now particularly down here underneath the tap there is an air bubble trapped here so I need to open the tap and release some titrant making sure there's no air bubbles in there. Secondly, before I record my starting volume, I'm going to remove this funnel because we can see there's some drops of liquid left in the funnel and if we don't remove them, those drops could fall in and that will increase or change the volume of titrant that I'm adding or recording. Finally, I am going to record my start volume. Now it's very important if you look you should be able to see that the titrant curves up at the edges of the glass tube, sort of like this. There's my scale and it's got this curve up. Now I need to record from the bottom of the meniscus there. So we record from the bottom of the meniscus in the glass tube. I now need to record my start volume and I'm ready to carry out my titration. In order to do that I've got the analyte and the flask at the bottom. I'll have added a coloured indicator which will enable me to monitor the progress of the reaction and spot when it's come to the end point, when it's completed. I'll open the tap to allow the titrant in, swirling gently to make sure it mixes. Now when I start to see the colour change, I'll slow down by closing the tap slightly so it then becomes, I'm adding it drop by drop, looking very carefully for the colour change. When I'm satisfied that the colour change has taken place, I close the tap and record my final volume, again from the bottom of the meniscus. I'd repeat that usually at least three times but until I had concordant results so that is results that are within 0.1 centimetre cubed of each other. That's how we use a bureau. Um, to recap the main sources of errors are reading from the bottom of the meniscus, removing the funnel before you start, checking for um, any air bubbles and getting rid of them, monitoring your reaction carefully so you don't miss the end point of the reaction and for some titrations there might be other sources of errors for example some reactions might depend on a particular pH in which case your titrant might need to be correctly buffered in order to see the end point accurately.